In the year 2058, the conflicts of different nations have finally come to an end to solve a common problem, the extinction of humanity. Scientists believe that in two decades, Earth will no longer be habitable to humans due to the irreversible effects of pollution and ozone depletion. Yet, to avoid panic, this is kept a secret from the public until they find a solution to the problem. In that sense, the United Global Space Force begins searching the whole galaxy for a new planet for a colonization mission, which leads them to a planet called Alpha Prime. With that, the Hypergate is invented. As the name suggests, it's a gateway that will allow any spacecraft that has the hyperspace technology to pass into any point of space where the other Hypergate is. However, a mutant terrorist group called the Global Sedition suddenly attacks the construction site of the Hypergate. Two fighter pilots, Major Don West and his friend Jeb Walker, are then deployed to fight the terrorists. Meanwhile, on Earth, Professor John Robinson is having a press conference to answer the media's question about his family's upcoming trip. The UGS staff will send John and his family to meet with the research colony. On this mission, the Robinsons will undergo creo sleep for 10 years until they reach Alpha Prime. Then, the whole family will oversee the construction of a hypergate on their side using each of the family member's intellect and skills. John and his wife, Maureen, are both great professors and scientists that will lead the mission. Their eldest, Dr. Judy, will be the ship's doctor. Then they got their second daughter, Penny, who's just a teenager but her mechanical skills and knowledge are unmatched for her age. And lastly, the Robinson family's youngest, Will, is a prodigy and is assigned to engineering and robotics. At this time, a reporter asks if they cannot just use the ship's hyperspace technology to jump to Alpha Prime immediately. John says no to this, explaining that using hyperspace jump without a hypergate is dangerous because it can send the ship to any part of the galaxy, known or unknown to man. Just then, another reporter asks about the condition of the pilot of the ship who's said to be ill, but the conference is stopped right there. As it turns out, the pilot of the mission isn't ill but actually was killed by the global sedition. Because of that, Don is assigned to be the new pilot of the Jupiter 2. At first, Don doesn't want to accept it, pointing out that he's a fighter pilot and not a family's babysitter. He even recommends Jeb for the mission, but his commander-in-chief wants him. With that, they take him to Jupiter 2. According to the commander-in-chief, John will be the commander for the majority of the mission. But as soon as they encounter any military problem, Don will be in charge. Looking around the ship, Don is amazed by its beauty. Yet, he's more amazed by the beauty of Judy and immediately hit on her, not knowing that she is John's daughter. So when he realizes it, Don feels embarrassed. At home, the principal from Will's school calls, telling Maureen Will is messing around a lot lately. In turn, she asks Maureen if she cannot really do anything for John to attend the science fair so Will will stop being a nuisance. Unfortunately, Maureen knows that John's whole attention is on the mission right now. Meanwhile, Penny is not happy to leave Earth, stating that she will miss many things there. Because of that, she plans to skip family dinner and sneaks out to say goodbye to her friends. Some time later, John comes home and sees Will's time travel machine. At this time, Maureen talks to him, saying that he should still give time to their kids even though he's busy saving the future of humanity. In turn, John points out that he's doing all this to ensure that their children will have a future to live on. In an unexpected turn of events, it was actually John who told UGS death that he will only accept the mission if the whole family will be on board because he doesn't want to leave their children for a very long time. Concurrently, a doctor named Zachary Smith is in a meeting with one of the higher-ups of the Global Sedition. It is then revealed that he's the one that gave them access to the room of the supposed pilot of Jupiter 2 that was killed. In this sense, he wants to get his money but the higher-up wants more from him. According to the man, John has found a new pilot and their attack on the construction site was a failure, so he wants Smith to do a direct intervention with the mission. Hearing this, Smith has no problem accepting his request, but he also asks for a lot of money as payment. As it turns out, Smith is the Robinson family's physician, but he became a sedition spy for money. After a while, he sneaks inside the Jupiter 2 and rigs the robot to change its directive from protecting the Robinsons to killing them. However, as he's about to escape, a higher-up calls him just to say that they're disposing of him. Then his radio suddenly electrocutes him, but he manages to take it off, luckily to only knock him out instead of killing him. The following day, the launch of Jupiter 2 in space commences. Inside, the family goes into their creo chamber, with Don coming in last after securing that everything is set for their journey. Some time later, Smith wakes up and finds himself trapped in the ship. Also, he's just in time to witness the robot that he rigged start blowing everything up, leaving him with no choice but to wake up Don and the Robinsons. Then, he hides and lets them deal with the robot. 
Don and John try to fight back, but they're easily thrashed, so will hacks the system of the robot, regaining control of it. Acting quickly, John checks on the controls of the ship, while Penny enables the anti-fire system, cooling down the panels once and for all. At this time, Smith wounds himself, pretending not to know what's going on. When Don sees him, he acts like he's panicking, but the burnt mark of the radio in his hand busts him. Don recognizes it as the technology of the global sedition, so he realizes that Smith betrayed and tried to kill them. However, they're interrupted when Maureen screams for help, saying that she cannot take Judy out of her chamber. Smith then takes this opportunity to bargain with his life, saying that he can help Judy if Don lets him live. Left with no other options, Don accepts the offer and goes to John to help him navigate the broken controls of the ship while Smith, Maureen, Penny, and will take Judy to the medical bay to revive her. With almost all of their systems down, they cannot control their ship to stir away from the sun as its gravity pulls them to certain death. Just then, Don suggests that they should do a hyperspace jump, willing to risk where they land rather than dying in the sun. Knowing that it's their only chance of survival, John agrees and they do a hyperspace jump. Afterward, John immediately checks on his family. Luckily, Smith manages to save Judy as he promised. Yet, it doesn't acquit him of his betrayal, so John confronts him about it. With anger and frustration, John nearly kills Smith, but he cannot do it because his children are watching. Instead, they locked him inside the medical bay while they figure out where in the galaxy they currently are. As expected, without a hypergate, they popped off into a random part of the galaxy. After a while, they all proceed to do what they can to fix the ship. But to their surprise, the ship detected a spatial anomaly outside. Looking at it, a hole seems to have appeared before them with another ship on the other side. Seeing this, Don flies the ship toward the hole without John's permission, stating that they don't have time to wait. Inspecting the ship up close, they see that it's called Proteus and it looks old and abandoned. Don comments that it's from Earth, yet the smaller ship that was docked wasn't theirs. To know more, they decide to dock at Proteus and the men, along with Judy, board the ship. Will also comes with them in the form of the robot that he calibrated so he can control it remotely. Stepping inside Proteus, Judy scans the air and confirms that it's breathable so they remove their mask. Walking carefully, Will notices that there is a cocoon-like thing that is sticking to the ceiling. Scanning it, Judy says it's something biological, but they just continue on their way. Then, they come across a section full of robots that seems to be more advanced than what Will is using right now. Shortly, they reach the remote operation station and watch everything on the archive that was not corrupted. Just then, Don sees that Jet was on this ship, trying to look for him and the Robinsons. Confused, Don points out that they already came looking for them and Jeb looks so old compared to the last time he saw him when they were just gone for about a day. Without any of them noticing, Smith manages to steal a piece of technology from the more advanced robots on the ship. However, they're interrupted when Will alerts them that something is coming for them. At this moment, spider-like alien creatures show up and charge at them, forcing the group to run until they reach the part of the ship where plants grew. There, they also find a monkey-like camouflaging alien. Looking at the state of the plant life, Judy comments that growth like this takes decades to happen. Continuing on their way, they find another control panel, and by good fortune, John manages to salvage the data and find the route of Alpha Prime. He quickly transfers the file to Jupiter 2, right on time before the spiders show up and run after them again. While on the run, Will notices that the spiders are eating their wounded fellows which disgust him. This time, they're heading back to their ship, but they have been locked down because when they close a bulkhead on the spiders, they melt it so the shit automatically undergoes fire protocol. Due to this, Don faces the spiders while the others work on the door. And when he realizes that he's outnumbered and outpowered, Will switches with him, sacrificing the robot so all of them can return safely to the ship, with Smith only getting a scratch from one of the alien spiders. However, the spiders turn out to have the ability to live and glide through space so they still reach Jupiter 2 after they detach from Proteus. Searching for its weakness, Judy finds out that they're attracted to heat so Don powers up the engines of Proteus, burning up the spider aliens that come near it. And to finally put an end to them, he also plans to blow up the ship. On the contrary, John gives him a direct order not to do it, but Don doesn't listen and blows up Proteus entirely. The impact of the explosion then sends them to a nearby planet. Enabling manual navigation, Don manages to land the ship not as roughly as it should be, only damaging the ship a little. However, John still scolds him for disobeying a direct order and putting his family on an unknown planet. In turn, Don points out that it's his call to make because it's a military situation. 
This sparks a bigger argument between the two, especially on who's rightfully in charge of the ship right now in their current situation. But they're interrupted by an angry Maureen who tells them to get their heads into the real problem at hand, saying that she just found a way to get off this planet. Looking over the planet, Maureen states that, upon scanning, she locates 500 rads of radioactive materials nearby which is enough to power up their ship to break orbit. Meanwhile, Smith is doing something with the tech he stole from the ship, but he's getting irritated as the wood he got from the spider won't stop itching. At the same time, Judy and Penny are examining the alien monkey when Penny asks her sister if she could keep it. Naming it Blarp, Penny promises Judy that she will take care of the alien. On the other side of the ship, Will is making another robot using the AI that he recovered from the old one. As it turns out, he managed to save the robot's AI to build another one, putting a piece of his own personality to it to make it emphatic and sympathetic. Some time later, Don approaches Judy and tries to hit on her again, and more sensually this time, only to be poured a glass of water by her. The next day, they finally see clearly the landscape outside the ship. But what's weirder is that there is a bubble-like dome nearby, and Maureen says that the radioactive material they need is in the center of it. Talking about it, John believes that the bubble outside is the same as the hole they passed through before when they see the Proteus. He says it's some sort of a passage through time, explaining why Jeb seems to be way older when they watch the clip and why it seemed like he had been looking for them for a very long time. Hearing this, Will says that the bubble is the same as the side effect he has been predicting if his time machine will be a success. However, John thinks he's just nerding out and dismisses him, causing Will to get frustrated with his father. John is about to follow his son when they feel the ground shaking. He thinks that the bubble is causing the earthquake and says that they may only have a little time before the planet breaks apart. With that, John goes to Will's room and apologizes to him, giving him the necklace that his father used to give him when he was a little kid every time he was leaving to fight a battle. Promising that he will be back, John tells Will that he should give it back to him when he returns. At the same time, Don apologizes to Judy for what he did last night. In turn, she tells him that if he comes back alive, they can talk about the two of them at last. After that, John and Don set out to the bubble to retrieve the radioactive material. While doing so, the ladies start fixing the ship while Will continues working on his robot. And at this time, John and Don are suddenly attacked by a robot that looks exactly like the one that Will has been working on. Then. To his surprise, his robot detects a Morse code message, saying that they're in danger. Going to Smith who's making the noise, the doctor states that they need to help his father and the Major. Being a kid, Smith easily tricked Will into sneaking out and going inside the bubble, but he's not ready for what he just discovered. Their three graves are lying with one another, each one for Maureen, Judy, and Penny. As it turns out, the one that attacked John and Don is none other than the older version of Will. According to him, John and Don from his time failed to go back after they left. Worse, some spiders from Proteus survived the explosion and arrived at the planet, killing Maureen, Judy, and Penny. Because of that, Will dedicated his life to completing his time machine, using the ship's core as the main power source. Looking at it, John and Don realize that it's the radioactive material they need to get for their ship to leave the planet. Old Will then continues explaining, saying that because of the limited power source, his machine can only transfer one person and do one travel only. With that, he plans to jump back to the past on the very day that their family boarded the ship to stop them. Meanwhile, outside, the recent discovery doesn't stop Smith from his evil plan, tricking Will into giving him access to his gun. Pointing the gun at the kid, he takes him to the old Jupiter 2, where old Will, John, and Don are. Then, he rigs the robot by changing its control into the one he's been working on the whole time, ordering it to follow no one but him. At this time, he finally sees the time machine and plans to use it for himself to go home. But Old Will just laughs at him, revealing that he was not alone all these years. Just then, the smith from his time shows up, but this smith is fully mutated into a spider-like alien. Mutated Smith explains that the scratch turns him into a godlike being and he becomes the father that Will never had in John. And to everyone's surprise, mutated Smith throws Smith down. Then, he orders the robot to kill John, Kid Will, and Don, but Old Will stops them. Because of that, mutated Smith orders the robot to keep an eye on them and only kill them if they try anything funny. Kid Will then appeals to the robot's sympathy, convincing it to override its command and help them. Luckily, the robot sides with them and helps Don and Kid Will go back to their Jupiter 2, while John stays behind to save Old Will. But before they go, Will gives John a weapon to fight mutated Smith, making him remember what happened in Proteus. On their way back, they come across Smith, so they take him back as well. Outside, 
Old Will asks again how his mother and sisters died, but mutated Smith doesn't want to talk about it again. At this time, Old Will is getting the feeling that something is wrong with mutated Smith. Due to this, he makes the portal hole smaller and then asks why the spiders didn't resurface ever since they quote-unquote attacked his family. When mutated Smith evades the question, Old Will finally realizes that it wasn't the spiders from the Proteus that killed Maureen and his sisters, but the spider in their ship, Mutated Smith. At this time, he realizes that Mutated Smith has been manipulating him all these years to build the time machine for him. Busted, Mutated Smith doesn't bother to lie about it, revealing that he plans to go back to the past and use all his baby spiders so he could rule Earth like a god. He then throws down Old Will, just in time for John to show up and fight him. Using the weapon that Kid Will gave him, he manages to wound Mutated Smith, yet he thinks highly of himself so he doesn't mind it. Just then, John reminds him that on the Proteus, the spiders eat their wounded fellow. At this time, the baby spiders come out from his egg sac and start eating him. John takes this opportunity to push him down the time machine, ripping his body apart through the unfinished time portal. Subsequently, he rescues old Will who's barely hanging onto his life. Unfortunately, saving him means that the radioactive material completely fuses with the time machine, so there's no way that their ship will get out of the dying planet. And together, they watch as Jupiter 2 tries to get out of the planet, only to die after planet debris hits them. Thinking quickly, Old Will sets his time machine back to the moment before Jupiter 2 takes off, telling his dad not to waste time before telling him that he cares. And to John's surprise, Old Will pushes him down to the ship where all his family attends to him, seeing the Old Will do the right thing even in the last moment of his life. In turn, Kibble gives back his grandfather's necklace to John, signifying that he's home. With that, John and Don fly the ship, trying to avoid the planet as much as they can. Suddenly, John gets an idea that instead of flying up, they should dive down to the planet's core and uses its gravitational push to launch them back into space. Knowing that they have no other choice, Don follows John's command and they successfully pull it off. In the safety of space, the Robinson family hugs each other. Meanwhile, Don receives a passionate kiss from Judy. The movie ends with Jupiter 2 doing another hyperspace jump, hoping that they will pop off at Alpha Prime this time. Lost in Space is just a decent movie. It's definitely fun, but there are other boring parts as well, maybe an overextension of some scenes only to make it over two hours. Yet, if you only want a space movie to watch that you can enjoy with your popcorn, Lost in Space can be one of your choices.